friends, welcome back. I'm so excited because you can see the title. We're gonna go see A Haunting in Venice. This is the weirdest release this year, I think. I don't know. Let me know what you think the weirdest release horror-wise is this year. I think that this is bizarre. With not much marketing at all, it's directed and starring Kenneth Branagh from a screenplay by Michael Green, but it's based on the Halloween party by Agatha Christie. I do not know that one, so... I guess it's a murder mystery we're gonna unfold, but the cast is what makes this so insane. As I said, it has Kenneth Branagh, Tina Fey, Michelle Yeoh, Kelly Riley, and Jamie Dornan, amongst others. It's just a really weird cast. I just think Tina Fey as well. I just, did you know that Tina Fey was gonna be in like a murder mystery horror movie? It's so bizarre, and I think it has a lot to do with the strike that we haven't heard much about this because they're just, it just went under the radar. The session has just popped up. There was no real announcement about it. There's been no real big marketing, but they have been showing the trailer for a while. So I'm really excited to see this one. And the reason being, we get another seance movie this year. Not just Talk To Me, now we have A Haunting in Venice. The movie takes place in post-World War II Venice, where we follow, and I'm gonna butcher this, Urku Paro. It's actually a continuation of his character that was on Death in the Nile and Murder on the Orient Express. So we're following a detective Detective through both of these stories. This is basically a trilogy. This is the last one, but the way that the Agatha Christie stories normally work, you can separate them. But we're following this detective through all of these stories and now in Venice who has recently retired and he's a recluse. He's living in his own exile and reluctantly he attends a seance. But when one of the guests get murdered, it's up to the former detective to once again uncover the killer. So, you know, it's pretty standard <laughs> Agatha Christie, but this one's going to be a really spooky adaption, which is why I'm covering it. Uh, honestly, I, I take it and leave a little bit of Agatha Christie. It depends how it is transformed. I'm not expecting much in terms of the characters. Um, I'm just gonna go in thinking it's gonna be like a fun, <laughs> only horror fans, a fun murder, a fun murder mystery movie and trying to guess what's gonna happen. Um, and hopefully there'll be a big twist and I won't see it coming because I absolutely loved when films are fully effective and fool me. So I'm excited for a ghost soundsy, gothic murder mystery. And I'm gonna let you know whether it's worth going out to the cinema to see this one or just waiting to watch it at home. Because as I keep saying, it's gonna be a standard, well, I believe, it's gonna be a standard murder mystery. So sometimes these ones are all right to miss at the cinema or if you miss them at the cinema, they're just as good at home. So um, we will see, let's go. I'll find out for you. I'll let you know whether it's worth your time and I'm not gonna spoil a thing, let's go. friends I just got out of a haunting in Venice <laughs> um let me just say number one I had the most theatrical experience <laughs> watching that in the cinema because as you saw it is storming we're getting the end of our winter here believe it or not I don't even want to explain that if you don't understand that I'm sorry but it's the end of our winter here and we've just had the most insane day full of thunder lightning and that cinema was it was intense and it was perfect with the movie um, because the movie is set on a really rainy, stormy night in the middle of Venice and, you know, the middle of the canals and uh, the cinema is literally shaking at one point and the door kept slamming and um, there was a leak inside the cinema. Thank God it wasn't on me, but it really worked with the atmosphere because it was raining throughout the whole film. So that was like a 5D experience. So very atmospheric. Um, let's start at the start. The movie is set on Halloween night. I'm very surprised they had such an early release being um, still September um, because basically we follow 
as we said, a detective or a retired detective. Um, he is conjured by a friend to coming to this seance, and the seance is to call upon someone who died a tragic death. And um, from there, of course, it becomes a murder mystery, and it's in this beautiful old property. You know, he's just running around trying to figure things out, basically. And it is very spooky. The start of it, like the first act, was really blew me away with how um, intense the scares were. Very old gothic kind of style scares, you know, the doors fly open, the wind howling, and I really liked that atmosphere. It was the the idea of spookiness it was definitely in the in the room, and the idea it's based on Halloween, the imagery of that, they had like all these kids dressed up, but and also because it was set in Venice, they all had the masks, and it was really cool the way they worked with the imagery, and I was really impressed by that. But um, the seance and that whole spooky atmosphere, it definitely tampers down throughout the film when it, it just gets into this kind of investigation, which is a lot of just interviews going around to all of the different, different characters. And it does get a little bit like we're just going through the motions until, you know, we find out the reveal. Um, I will say I did not pick the reveal, so that was good. It kind of fooled me in a little way. There was definitely things that I could work out along the way. It's such a hard like balance balancing act and that's why writers are so amazing at what they do trying to create and I guess like Agatha Christie is so great at what um she did because it's all about you know giving you certain clues and then but not giving you enough so you'll be surprised by the reveal but still feel smart enough to follow the story along so I was really impressed with the whole opening section and, and how I was drawn into the mystery and if that wasn't there I don't think I would have really cared what happened because it is kind of like a slow drama after that but it definitely took the theme very seriously which I really respect so I've got to definitely give it props for that I do think that it was very well designed it was just really interesting that it was on Halloween and that's why I feel like although you know we're, we're coming up to spooky season and if you're a horror fan every day is spooky season every day of the year is horror filled um but I do think that this one would be a great lead up to Halloween especially if you're having like a whole week of movies that are based on Halloween night this one's a perfect addition for 2023 that's what I think especially if you're waiting for the weather where you are to cool down. I'm lucky that I had like the perfect uh, situation for it, which was just very rare and very random and actually kind of spooky in itself that it lined up that way. Um, the other thing I absolutely adored about this film is the cinematography. It was so beautiful, just so incredibly stunning. It was more so... I'm going to say it, the jewel tones, um, the color grading was was just beautiful um, from the start. It was really interesting because when I think of Venice, I don't think of vibrant, <laughs> vibrant locations. I've been to Venice and I think of it more, I guess, uh, I see most of it like it's confusing. It's like a concrete maze, um, obviously beautiful canals and stuff, but they really brought out pops of color throughout the whole thing um, in the exterior shots during the day, and then it completely transforms at night, and I just thought it was so stunning. Like, I was really blown away by the way this film looks. Um, I thought it was incredible. Just the array of um, different locations and how they framed things, um, especially during the daytime. There was, like, these symmetrical um, kind of, I guess, like, one shots with him in the middle. It was almost like Wes Anderson-ish because it was like the color was so vibrant behind him. And I was just really impressed and it was not something I was expecting. And then of course, when we get into the spooky stuff, it very much changes into more of a grungy and very textured, which you'd expect somewhere, you know, as old as Venice to have those, you know, textured walls and the leaks in the house. And I don't know, like all of the cracks and everything. It was just perfect for that. So I really liked that. I did jump a couple of times towards the start portion when they're really, you know, sucking you into the spookiness. Um, there was a kind of a jump scare that really got me. As it went on, I kind of like trickled out. I thought Tina Fey was actually kind of perfect for this role. I haven't really seen her in like a period piece. I'm sure she's done many of them, but uh, I thought that she plays she plays it to a T. So um, it it actually made a lot of sense after seeing the film, um, seeing how why she was casted for that kind of role. Overall, I do think it's a good time, but I do think it's for people who want to watch a mystery you know, and find out all the clues and have it slowly unravel. And it's not going to be as thrilling or the tension's not really high. You're kind of, you go into a murder mystery, especially, again, Agatha Christie, knowing what you're going to get out of it. And it's exactly that. But they really set up the theming 
quite well at the start. So if you're into murder mysteries, um, this is a good one that has great theming behind it and they've put a lot of work into that uh, and it was able to fool me, so I was happy. I keep thinking, like, Penn and Teller, fool me. <laughs> That's what I like in films. I want to be fooled and I was a little bit. I, I do think, I have to say it, I do think... <laughs> With the reveal and whatever happens, I do feel a little bit cheated, but I'll leave that up to you to figure out. You will have no idea what I mean until you watch it, but I do feel a little bit cheated. So if you have seen the film, let me know if you felt the same way. But I do recommend putting this into your rotation if it sounds like something you'd be willing to watch, but maybe just wait till a little bit later. Wait until we're, you know, well into October. Like I said, it'll be a really good one on the lead up, especially if you have like a stormy night and you can't do anything else. This will be the film to chuck on for sure. I'm going to give this one a personal score of 6 out of 10, a scare score of like 4. It's kind of spooky at the start, but it really phases out, so it's kind of, it, it attempts it, <laughs> you know? You have to be really uh, dialed in for it to be really effective, I think. And originality, I'd probably give it like a 2. Have you seen A Haunting in Venice or do you plan to see it? Let me know down below. And are you wondering what else is coming out this year that's spooky and what is left to look forward to? Well, I have a list of my most anticipated films for the rest of the year right here. Check it out and let me know if any of them make your list. I'll talk to you all very soon. Stay safe and stay spooky. Bye, friends.